we, ch we change laws. How easy is it to change a law in New York State? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. But when you're the largest employer and the largest taxpayer in the state of Nevada, we can get laws changed pretty quickly. <laughs> and uh, we regularly do it. Hey, everyone. Hope everybody is doing well. So I want to make this video about former CEO Jim Murin, perhaps out of all the people in this town that has brought so much destruction and chaos. And if any of you don't know who he is, uh, this guy is the former CEO of MGM Resorts. So that includes Mandalay Bay, Luxor, Bellagio, Mirage, MGM Grand, many of these properties. And he hardly was around in the spotlight until the late 2000s. And there has been a lot of nasty changes that has taken place in this town since he stepped in. And not to mention, this guy has a lot, a lot of behind the ugly scenes in a lot of the politicians we currently have and had from both political parties. Remember, this is the man who started the paid parking initiative. And now a lot of people are wondering, why aren't people coming anymore? You know, maybe it's because a lot of people are really fed up and tired of being nickel and dime for service that isn't all that great when you think about it. You know, do, do you really think people want to travel several hours a day to be nickel and dime like this? What is this man thinking? Now, perhaps I sometimes think that the same establishment that helped pump up the strip and add all those hotels is perhaps the same establishment that wants to take it down because, well, their agendas have changed. They have met one of their goals and now they want to move on to the next one. So a lot of people are pointing out that maybe this town could be a ghost town. Well, not according to this article. Murin optimistic about Vegas recovery from virus. And you see, they interview him. They really kiss his you know what. And they've interviewed him many, many, many times. Let me tell you something, folks. A lot of these rich people, when they tell you something, when they believe something, it's usually better to believe the opposite. Because I can tell you what is really, really wrong with the United States is the fact that you have a bunch of corporate tycoons in pharma, in banking, in media, in a lot of these sectors of the economy that are basically running our society, limiting our choice in consumer, suppressing our wages, controlling our media, outsourcing our jobs, and running both political parties, and artificially creating a civil war to, well, create massive division. And yet these are the scums like Soros, along with the Koch brothers, that are funding these non-governmental organizations and creating all this tension in this country, and not actually creating an organization that's behind the truth of what's going on in this country. By the way, this guy funds from what I've recognized the Southern Poverty Law Center. And any day, I wouldn't be surprised if the Southern Poverty Law Center does an article about me, calling me a bigot. In fact, they have in many of the people that I know. So Murin is convinced that Las Vegas will come back bigger and better. Now, first of all, it all depends on the situation. It depends on what the pricing of hotels going to be what the economy globally is going to be. Because I can tell you if they're going to keep nickel and diming and this COVID mania goes on and if the housing market blows up, which they're not going to talk about this article, none of these politicians and none of these business executives are hardly going to talk about it. Every good buddy is going to pretend that 2008 never really happened. But in reality, Las Vegas housing is strongly overvalued. And there's a lot of forbearance. And it's being propped up by these low interest rates. Not just mortgages, but even consumer goods as well, which have a, a large factor in the strip economy. So he believes that it's going to come back better than ever. What evidence does he have? Now, let's read. He left his job in February to be the COVID-19 response. Now, just look at that. It sounds like you have insider information. It sounds like you knew that this COVID thing was going to come. And it sounds like you left before the ship was about to be abandoned. So it really sounds like this is kind of like 9-11, more of this inside job. So he has more than 10 properties. 
and from the downturn of the Great Recession. In 2022, I think we're going to be having a very rapid snapback in consumer activity. But again, what evidence does he have of that? Because we have a lot of downturn effects in the economy. Now, unless if policy positions or business leaders change, we may never know. COVID-19s have been rising in Nevada recently. What can you tell us about the work and to tame the virus is here? First of all, I have a buddy who works at Park MGM, formerly Monte Carlo. He tested positive, but he hardly has any symptoms. The same with Steve Sizilak. In fact, Nevada, I've heard, has above average rate for COVID numbers. And guess what? We've done all the masks. We've done all the shutdown. A lot of businesses have been lost. There's been a lot of suicides, depression, everything. Is this really resulting in massive numbers of symptoms? Learn the truth about COVID, folks. It is real. But there's a lot of overhype because if people aren't getting massive symptoms and if the people are dying mainly because they have underlining health conditions, folks, we have been strongly been misled. Think about it. And this is the reason why we've had the recent election result. Are you kidding me? We've been more prepared than we now in March. Of course, many of the experts have been saying like Fauci, don't wear a mask. We've also had better education, understanding of the disease. Well, how exactly? And we've been allowing to treat better. But what about all the other truths I've just told you? The heavily tourism-based economy in Las Vegas has suffered greatly because of the pandemic. Now, it makes you think that, do you think these people are responsible for the reason why our economy is not diversified? Think about it. We certainly cannot wait a vaccine to jumpstart activity in the, in the valley. Well, I'm not trusting any vaccine, I can tell you. <laughs> wow. And of course, even if we do get a vaccine pretty soon, they, wanna, they don't want to give the current president credit. What they want to do is they just want to keep them silent. And they say, oh, well, we have stadiums, arenas, and convention centers that we're going to have the level of revenue activity that we have now. We need health and safety measures. Do you think people really want to be tested constantly and have social distancing? But we want steady improvement until 2021. Will we see if those promises, because they told us, well, things are just going to go away very, very soon, later this year. News came out that the Sands is selling the Venetian. I was surprised. I'm not sure what the outcome will be. I don't know the vast majority of profits they've been making lately have been coming outside of Las Vegas. We'll see where that goes. Well, <laughs> maybe this is an opportunity for these corporations to consolidate. Do you miss the gaming industry? Yeah, I sure I do after screwing people. Because the governor asked me to run the task force. Now, why is it that he's part of the task force? Why can't they just appoint someone who has a better credentials? who have better qualifications for the medical industry. This is the number one problem with Sizilak. He's putting people that are not qualified. He's putting corporate interests as part of the sector. This explains everything. This is the number one problem with our governor. This is why this person is so shady. He's putting corporate interests over. It's not mainly because, oh, he's just a liberal socialist. No. It's special interest. That's what it is. Would you entertain the possibility of getting back in this industry? I don't think so. No. I've been in there for 22 years. <laughs> well, look, folks, even though we don't want him back, does not mean that the next guy isn't going to be necessarily even any better. Think about it. It's called Revolving Door. They have many of these buffoons out there. I'm an investor now. I love to invest for a variety of sectors. I've spent 14 years on Wall Street. Well, there you go. This is what's wrong with Las Vegas. Wall Street has basically taken over the strip sector, the real estate sector, and they run much of the country and much of the world. And they certainly run a lot of our politicians and our media. And he tells him that he's been with Kirk Kirk Corian, 
for the last 17 years. I'm certainly don't think that he's very happy about how he has run this company the way it is. This has been one of the most contentious presidential elections in history. And he says how he was a Republican and he's from Connecticut. Well, let's figure out why he has changed because the Republican Party has changed. Now, as you know, he's not alone, along with Bloomberg, many of these other wealthy, you know what, they have changed. Because, as you know, if you look at major campaign donors, you'll see the Democrats have become more of the party of large corporations. There's been a massive change in the last 15 years. I can tell you that. When I came here, I learned a lot about Nevada. Harry Reid. Yeah, see, this is how we got all his campaign contributions. This is how we get all these crony people in charge. And then... He tells us about how the current president is so divisive. He's racist, bigoted, reggae. Oh my gosh. You know, at the end of the day, look, you can have people that have very rough style, but what I really care about is how we're gonna pay our bills, how we're gonna put food on the table. And that's the problem. Just like the interview I just had in the milk tea place, they focus too much on feelings not how we're going to get by. So I want someone who is better on clean energy, immigration and healthcare. Yeah, immigration. Yeah. So that way we can have mass numbers of immigration. And like many of your properties, like 40, 50% of your workforce are born in another country. And meanwhile, we have all these young people out there who can't get real good quality jobs like my friend who's not getting a reliable job, and instead the quality of jobs and pay has deteriorated and you're having these highly paid salaries. That's why you want massive immigration. And to those of you who want massive immigration, let's put laws to make sure that people like him don't get away with cheap labor. And we want diversity. Yeah, folks, this is the sad part. When they mean diversity, they usually mean that they don't want white people. And they're telling you that white men are getting all the privileges, but yet they're going after the typical white men, but they're not going after the powerful like white men, like the guys who he support or Murin himself, because he's the one that's getting away with all the corruption. So if any case, if white men are the problem, he is being shielded, he's being covered up. This is the sad reality. You need to expose what this is really going on. Now, let me show you some of the images. So as you can see here, this is Murin and this is Sizzlack. This is explains everything. This is why I don't have my pain and frustration with Sizzlack. I was at the protest. I was telling people that don't put your anxiety in this guy. Him and Sandoval and all these people, they're part of the same boat. Wake up. Look at this. This is another photo of him. They were at a meeting. Who knows what they were talking about? This was back in 2017, believe it or not. And they were probably talking about how COVID was going to be a plan to take down the entire country and the world. This again right here, you can see this is insider selling of Jim Murin. Right here, selling stock, 2017, MGM Resorts International, a month before the massacre. This explains everything, folks. Why isn't he being investigated? Why isn't he being put on trial because of all this? What does this tell you? My goodness. And there you have it right here. Look at this. The top contributors to Joe Biden. Number six, MGM Resorts International. Think about it. Out of all the campaign contributions. Now, this has been taken a long time ago, but number six is very, very high. And then take a look at this. This is something I found maybe kind of off topic, but you might want to take a look. Look at this. Jesuits funding the La Raza Group. ICE out of California, Casa de Maryland, all these other organizations. And by the way, of course, I believe Murin and Sizzlack, they're both Roman Catholic. But I don't know. I, 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 I kind of take these things as something that they can easily be debunked. But the SCIU, maybe the Culinary Union. And that's the thing, folks. This is showing you that a lot of these unions 
are not working in the best interest of the average worker. They're working as a tool to use identity politics, the race card, to fool people, to serve these CEOs, these executives. And while they get away with all this crap, and they continue to pump these politicians. I want to show you something real quick. Murin, by the way, is, or at least at one point, the most highly compensated employee in the entire strip, in the entire sector of the Las Vegas economy. What does this tell you? Where are the unions of, of all this? Because I thought labor unions were supposed to make sure that everybody gets a good, fair, decent share. Meanwhile, their employees are not being paid well, and they're not getting good benefits. These are not reliable jobs, but yet these buffoons are making close to $40 million a year. So this shows you these unions are nothing but a bunch of sellouts. And guess what? They pump Biden. Do you think Biden's going to do anything? Really? Did income inequality go down under Obama? Why do you think there was such a big move for Bernie Sanders? Think about it. Wow, this is really, really sad. And I think in the next several years, we're gonna really see a lot of truth come out and you need to hold these groups and these people accountable over time. That's why I'm not concerned about it so much. We've got a lot of truth on our side. Everybody, thank you so much. Please share.